Hey everybody, it's 9 o'clock and 9 o'clock is with me, Father Warner. We are in Tuesday of the 14th week in Ordinary Time. Our text is taken from Matthew chapter 9, verse 32 to 38. I've entitled today's teaching, You are the answer to your own prayer. So let's read the text first. After they had gone away, a demoniac who was mute was brought to him. And when the demon had been cast out, the one who had been mute spoke, and the crowds were amazed and said, Never has anything like this been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, By the ruler of demons he casts out demons. Then Jesus went about all the cities in which most of his deeds of power had been done, because, sorry, then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. The Gospel of the Lord. Now, we have come to the 10th and the last of Matthew's collation of the miracles of Jesus that are found in chapter 8 and 9. In chapter 10, we will look at the second of Jesus' discourses. It's called the Mission Discourse. The first one was the Sermon on the Mount, chapter 5, 6 and 7. Then chapter 8 and 9 had 10 miracle stories and 3 teachings on discipleship. And then chapter 10 is the second uh, discourse called the Mission Discourse. But when you carefully read on, on careful uh, following of the readings taken for the liturgy at Holy Mass, you would have observed that the ninth miracle has been dropped, that is verses 27 to 31. The healing of the two blind men, which is found in these verses, is repeated again. Look, in fact, look in your Bible in chapter 20 of Matthew's Gospel. And it almost seems to correspond to the healing of Bartimaeus, the blind man, whose this text is also found in Mark chapter 10. So this ninth miracle has been dropped, but the text will also will be taken up as the gospel for the fourth Sunday of Lent. So we are looking now at the tenth miracle. So for now we focus on the tenth miracle, and I want to say there is much to reflect and ponder. You know. While the miracle seems straightforward, it is very noteworthy. But what follows is what will keep our lives nourished and strengthened. What follows after the miracle, verse 35 onwards. You know, remember that God speaks to us not just through miracles, but through every encounter and through every event. Whether it's positive or negative, God speaks to us. Now, the miracle in today's gospel is the second such miracle in the 10-part collation of miracles that Matthew mentions a demoniac. When you read the Gospel of Mark, you will realize that St. Mark is unapologetic of Jesus' battle against Satan. And the very first chapter in the Gospel of Mark has a man with an unclean spirit sitting in the very synagogue that Jesus was. See Mark chapter 1 verse 23. Now, for those who think that the name of Satan is merely a way we scare our children into submission, the battle against Satan is real, the battle against Satan is constant. You know, we are told that the healing of the mute demoniac wins the favor of the crowd. And they say, never has anything like this been seen in Israel. But such high praise for Jesus simply turns the ire and the anger of the Pharisees against him. What do they say? They say it is by the ruler of demons that he casts out demons. Now, this is not just a matter of sour grapes. This is deadly venom being spit out of the cobra's mouth. The Pharisees have now become the deadly enemies of Jesus. And I want to think, uh, reflect with you here. How often have good people been destroyed in our church by so-called holy people who are jealous of others? You know, read the Acts of the Apostles. The Acts of the Apostles uses the word jealous several times 
to refer to the hostility against the ministry of the apostles. The hate poured out by the Pharisees is an opportunity for us to examine our own motivation in serving the Lord. It is an opportunity to examine our lives in our dealings with our colleagues, with our relatives, with our friends and neighbors whom we have very often destroyed with our words because we could not control our jealousy. So do not console yourself that jealousy is a venial sin. This is a sin in capital letters because jealousy is nothing but murder. And if you don't believe me, we did this in, cha in Matthew chapter 5, verse 21 to 24. Now, observing our Lord's response to the hate he faced can help us deal with the hate that is often thrown our way. You know, Jesus had the power to call fire and brimstone and burn up those Pharisees to cinder, yet he did nothing of that sort. And in order to understand this point well, you need to keep in mind that the superscriptions to every Bible text, just before each text begins, there's a heading, it's called a superscription. The superscription to every biblical text, the very fact that we have chapters and verses in the Bible, all of this, the superscriptions, the chapters, the verses, were actually added in the late 1500s. So if you really want to read this text as it ought to be read, read it continuously. Jesus' response to the Pharisees' hate must be read seamlessly from verse 34 to 35. At once you will notice that for Jesus, this hate does not hinder his ministry. Why? Because verse 35 tells us that he went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, curing every disease and sickness. You know, our Lord could not be bothered by petty hate and neither should you. If you know in your heart that the persecution you face is because you chose to be faithful to God, then just carry on what you are doing. I want to say this to you. So many good Christians abdicate their posts of service in church because of another sinful brother or sister who cannot deal with their own insecurity. And what do you do? You resign your post. By resigning your post, you have just given your place to Satan. Your post was allocated for you because God picked you as his angel. But another devil in the parish, because he is jealous or she is jealous, attacks you. And what do you do? You say, I don't want to be in the parish council anymore. I give up. Father, please take this away. And you know what? You walk away. And that other devil takes the place that was ordained by God for you. Don't give up. Jesus did not give up. He was called Satan himself. They called him by the prince of demons. You are doing all of this. What was Jesus' reaction? He got up and he went to all the cities and all the villages. And he went everywhere and he healed the sick and he cured them every disease, every sickness. He didn't sit down and say, oh, everybody hates me. Parish council hates me. Parish priest hates me. I'm going to give up. No, he didn't do that. Jesus' eye was on his mission, not on the opinions of those around him. And scripture tells us in verse 36, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed, they were helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. You know, in this context, Jesus asks his disciples, therefore, he says, because the sheep were harassed and dejected, Jesus says to his disciples, turn to the Lord of the harvest. You know, our Lord did not ask his disciples to pray merely for vocations to the priesthood and religious life. Whenever this text is used very selectively for such a cause, I think it is disingenuous to say the least. Yes, I know verse 37 uh, could be used for such a prayer for vocations, but it is not an exclusive prayer for vocations to the priesthood and religious life. You know, I grew up seeing uh, these American posters that attempted to recruit soldiers for the Vietnam War. It had Uncle Sam there with his finger pointing, saying, Uncle Sam wants you. That's what it said. It was an effort to enroll young men to join the army. When Jesus asked his disciples to pray for laborers in his vineyard, 
he did not rule out the fact that you could be both. You could be the petitioner of the prayer and you could be the petition answered. You are the laborer that was prayed for as much as you are the petitioner of the prayer. So think about this. When you pray, Lord, we need people to work in your vineyard. You are also the answer to your own prayer. Learn to say yes to Jesus. Learn to say yes to ministry. Even though people may hate you, they hated Jesus. So why should we be spared of the hate? So let us pray. Lord, we experience so often rejection, hate, venom, anger, bitterness, from people around us because we serve you. We understand, Lord, when people who do not share our faith attack us, but it hurts us when people from within our own community, our own faith, destroy us. It breaks us, Lord. And very often we give up, but you did not. You carried on your mission. So give me that strength, Lord. Give each one of our viewers that strength to carry on doing the good that they do. Even if they are misunderstood. Even if they are rejected. Even if they are accused of all kinds of things which are not true. Lord, I want to pray today for all those who serve your church, especially our lay people the thousands and thousands across the world who dedicate their time. And I want to pray also for those whose hearts are filled with jealousy for those who do well in the church. Heal these jealous hearts, Lords. Heal them because they bring down your church. They destroy your church. Heal this insecurity that they feel so that your church may grow and that we may encourage each other and build each other and build the kingdom that you came to bring about. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. As we continue also to pray for those who are sick, for those who are overburdened, as we heard this Sunday in the Gospel, Jesus said, come to me, all you who are labor, all you who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. Bring rest, Lord, to those today who truly need it. In your loving name, we make this prayer. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you everybody. Don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends, do subscribe to this channel if you haven't done, and to all our donors to um, our children's home here in Nuwe. Thank you. God bless you.